I learned early on that stories shape culture. Yes, they do. When I was young, I felt excluded all the time. It's so important for me to create stories that include marginalized communities. One of the beautiful things about the Latinx list is that you have 10 writers who all come from different experiences. What drives you? What's that push? To me, my culture represents a North Star that I can kind of follow. Like I'm trying to be the artist both my parents weren't allowed to be. They know how complicated it is being Latinx in this country. We've been here, we're indigenous, this is our home. I feel like now people are willing to pay attention. Hi, I am Paloma Martinez. I am one of 10 named on the inaugural Latinx TV list. And I'm so excited to be here with my mother, Marta. And we're gonna talk about all things Latinidad. I wanted to ask you, what is it like to be Latin? It means so many things, really. To be a Latinx, to be a Latina, to be an American born Mexican. I'm a bicultural human. I'm probably multicultural. But significantly, the two cultures that have influenced me the most are Mexican culture and American culture. I feel like a blend of both. And what that means to me is that I have access to the amazing cultural specificities of being Mexican, and then also helping define what it means to be American. Did coming from a large Hispanic family influence you on your view of the world? And how did that contribute to your writing? Well, I we think that's been a huge influence on me. I think La Familia is so important yeah. to Latinx cultures. And, yeah, it is. And ours in particular, especially on your side of the family, is so big, but so loving and so warm and welcoming mm -hmm. that that has carried me through too. I remember on weekends we'd get together and there'd be like at least 50 people packed into like a two bedroom house. When the other kids were out playing, I actually would sneak back in and I would listen to you guys reminisce about your childhood, hearing you guys talk about what felt like legendary tales um, absolutely uh, made me fall in love with stories and made me want to tell stories about people like in our family. And not only that, um, it was awesome being exposed to like so many different people. So how did you make the transition from Mexicali over to California? My parents were both born in Texas, so they were American citizens. We were born in Mexico, but because they were born uh, in the U.S., we were considered children of American citizens born abroad. But we were poor because we worked the fields. Um, so that influenced me in the way I raised you and that I wanted you to have the freedom to create without having to worry about where your next meal was going to come from. I absolutely see the fact that I can now focus on writing is an absolute privilege. It wasn't always like that, obviously. Mm -hmm. You emphasize education mm -hmm. so much for Al and I. Mm -hmm. And I think that has probably the most profound effect on me as a storyteller. Now, you had also an experience of a couple years ago where you got cancer. I did. And I wanted to ask you, did that have an effect on you? I don't know why I'm emotional about that. It's okay. It's like, it's like, it's happy tears though, you know? Mm -hmm. So, you know, something profound happened in my life. Mm -hmm. um, I was essentially let go from a job that I had held, held for five years, the first job I had out, out of grad school. And on the same day, I was diagnosed with breast cancer. Mm -hmm. It was this moment in time that I think, and this might sound far out, that was needed for me to really be able to have a chance to self-reflect and really love myself more than I had been. I was a workaholic, I had Word. some imposter syndrome issues. A lot of that comes from being not Mexican enough or not American enough um, yeah. and being a, a queer woman of color. Mm -hmm. Cancer really allowed me to blossom back into who I really am, who I remember as a child, you know, being like 
super curious, confident, very loving, loving to myself. And it has 100% had a huge impact on my writing. I write now from a place of more vulnerability, more authenticity. I'm, not, I'm less worried about what other people want. For me, it's really important. Like What I write is going to influence culture in a very positive way. I'm you know, going on three years cancer-free now, mm -hmm. but I wouldn't change anything. And I'm so grateful that you know you opened up your home to Ayla and I mm -hmm. during treatment because um, it would have been kind of a mess to do that in our um, shoebox of an apartment in West Hollywood when we were living. And it allowed me to uh, take time to go and explore uh, right by the ocean. The Edge and Borde was predominantly written by the sea. I'm so thrilled with your writing. I wanted you to tell me a little bit about the story, uh, The Edge. The Edge El Borde, which was the pilot um, that was named on the Latinx TV list. Mm -hmm. I read this article about a sewage spill that happened in the Tijuana River back in 2018. And truth be told, I was horrified at this idea that two places that I love, Mexico and the United States, border towns, like, you know, because where my parents are from, um, were being polluted so dramatically. And to be honest, you influenced the angle of how to tell it. Um, I had never written a genre mm -hmm. uh, story, and I know that sci-fi is your favorite. Um, so I thought, how cool would it be to turn this real story that is about, you know, the environment, humanity, things that are really affecting us right now into a sci-fi. It was playing with those different notions of biculturalism, identity, but of course, you know, who we are universally as humans and how we relate to the earth. Being a Latinx TV list, one of the selected few, how is it working for you? I felt recognition because I was reading scripts for a Latinx based company and I would hear things like, oh, we, don't, we just don't have any Latina writers. Sorry, it's gonna have to be a guy, even though it's a female protagonist story, because there's just no Latinx or Latina writers out there. And I'm like, that is incorrect. We just haven't been given access. Being Latinx is so diverse in itself. It is so varied. And something that I think that people don't, I don't have no idea why, don't see is that, you know, universal stories still apply to the Latinx community. What Latinos have influenced your writing? I would start with is probably Cesar Chavez, Dolores Huerta, people like Ellen Ochoa, who was the first Latina astronaut. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, when you hear stories of someone doing something so remarkable, it allows you to think, maybe I can also do that. If you can't see it, it's really hard to think that you can do it too. Well, Mija, I think that's the last question I had for okay. you. And I love being here with you. Thank you for doing this. And to you, I'm so, thrilled to be here. I knew this was something I wanted to do with you and mm. I appreciate everything that you've done for me and all the hard work. You know, you were a single mother also um, that you did for, for my brother and I, for Al and I. And so. Well, it was never hard work to raise two beautiful children. It was just a privilege. Thanks so much for celebrating Latin heritage with us. Like, subscribe, comment, on this channel for all things Hulu.